my HQ teams and welcome to the big Sunday game. It's bigger, it's better and it's bloody fabulous. Here's some good news for you. Jennifer Saunders has hinted that Absolutely Fabulous could possibly be revived, but she says it would have to be age appropriate, whatever that means. It's a way better response than last time though when she replied, I can't see the point. Well, we see the point. Who wants more Eddie and Patsy? Thumbs up or down in the chat, guys, let me know. I'm Shazza Carpenter, your ad fab presenter who's up in your phone, front and center. And this is HQ Trivia, where you use your brain to bring the pain and make it rain. The rules here are simple. I'm gonna ask you a series of questions from easy to hard. You've got 10 seconds to tap that answer. Get it correct, you move on. Answer all 12 right, you win or split the cash. Got any extra lives on stash? I hope so. If not, invite your mates to HQ using your code to score some, they can help you stay in the game and win big, really big tonight, because tonight we're giving away a wild and wonderful £5,000. That's enough to redo your hair in a blonde beehive, Patsy style, splash out on the finest champagne and go for enough facelifts until you have a beard. But before you spank the cash, you've got to bank that cash. Let's get to the quizzing, shall we? Let's do it. Here we go with Q1. In the fable of the three little pigs, what blows down two houses? A broken hoover, a wolf, a possessed leaf blower. Huffing and puffing and blowing your house down. And then another one. They're hardly hurricanes, but who proved just as destructive here? Huffing, puffing, and in desperate need of his inhaler. It was a wolf. The wolf huffed and puffed. Yes, he did. 87,000 of you howling for more trivia as we move on to Q2. In athletics, what's the name for a competition consisting of 10 events? Decanter, decathlon, deck chair. You'll be the pissed off if you get this wrong. Pretty easy. It's the only one I stand a chance of winning, but dossing on a deck chair isn't an Olympic event, sadly. Back-to-back -back pentathlons. It's a decathlon. That's what we're talking about here on Q2. 85,000 of you scoring the gold there. Now, before we race on, do not forget, Monday is movie night every week. So roll out the red carpet and join us at 9 p.m. tomorrow. All of you film buffs get out the director's chair for that one. And are you ready for Q3, ready or not, here it comes. Short interviews in news programs gathering public opinion are known by which term? Lollipops, Vox Pops, Ice Pops. Time to get a pop in, players. If you went for ice pops, you are freezing cold here. Sweeter on your ears than your tongue is Vox Pops. You call a man on the street, they call it in the US. 65,000 of you got that right. Lost a lot of you there already on Q3. 16,000 of you we lost. But we're moving on right now to Q4. Which of these is a Chinese messaging app that reached over a billion users in 2018? We talk, we chat, we speak. It's a lot of communication. A billion users, 2018 isn't even over yet. It's the Chinese version of WhatsApp, but what's this app called? Chitting away, it's WeChat. Your chitter chatter boxes knew that, didn't you? 44,000 of you speaking loud and clear. Lost a lot of you there again, 20,000 of you down. We're wee wee weeing all the way on to Q5. Cardamom is obtained from a plant in the same family as which of these spices, cinnamon, Ginger, vanilla. Quite a brutal game so far, isn't it? It's really getting spicy. Three tasty tangs, but who shares a mum with a cardamom? The only true spice in the Spice Girls. It's ginger. Ginger is the answer we were looking for here. Oh my goodness, oh my gosh. A savagery taking place here on Q5. What is happening here? Almost 30,000 of you gone so soon. 9,886 of you got that correct. And cardamom plays a big role in Indian curries, but it also pops up in Scandinavian pies as well. My goodness, that was a rough one, wasn't it? Q6, which of these movie scores was not composed? by John Williams' Minority Report, Home Alone, Back to the Future. You can smell the sausages burning, can't you? He wrote the soundtrack to my childhood with Star Wars, but which of these was not scored by John Williams' Great Scott? It's Back to the Future. 
That's what. And 4,490 of you on another savage. Double the sausage happening here on Q6. My goodness, 8,000 of you gone. 4,490 of you are moving on. Now, the 80s classic was scored by Alan Silvestri, who also wrote the music for Forrest Gump, and who framed Roger Rabbit. This is probably the roughest game we've had in a while. It's shout-out time, everyone. Let's relax for a second, okay? Hello to Natasha, Margaret, and Gabriellius planning on winning big tonight. Hopefully, you're still with us. Happy birthday to twins Taylor and Habib. Hello to Ben Bryan helping dad out yesterday. That was nice of you. Lewis and dad Gary are playing in West Berkshire and Linda and her mum are with us too. It's a family night obviously. Good luck to all of you. And this Thursday we've got a fresh new theme game in store for you. Yes we do. It's so exciting. Get out the Duck Martins. Blast your favourite Spice Girls track and get ready for a Titanic evening because it's all about the 90s. Yes it is. This Thursday at 9pm. That's going to be so fun. And so is this, hopefully, Q7. Which of these is not a poem by T.S. Eliot? Nightmail, Journey of the Magi, The Hollow Men. Where are you paying attention in English lit? Because it's about to get lit. If you weren't for Journey of the Magi, then I am afraid your journey is up right here. The darkest of deliveries, Nightmail is better than blackmail, isn't it? For 2,991 of you. Poems are often a labor of love, but W.H. Auden was paid to write this one for a documentary about postal trains riveting stuff. Q8. In his youth, Rod Stewart lost a job as a wallpaper designer for which reason? He's colorblind, singing at work, too, using too much tartan. All legitimate reasons to sack somebody, I guess. He makes Braveheart look unpatriotic, but his tartans weren't to blame here. Explaining those garish outfits, it was because he's colorblind. Did you know that? 1,835 of you seeing clearly on this round. Now, Stuart struggled to hold on to jobs as a kid, finally giving up and becoming a rock star instead. You show him, Rod. Q9. The child of which former prime minister has appeared in an opera in the West End. John Major, Margaret Thatcher, Tony Blair can shatter glass with their voice just like their parent can. Three bigwigs of Westminster, but who also has ties to the West End. Batman's grinning nemesis, Tony Blair, is the man we're talking about here. And 899 of you nailing that one. That was a rut. That was a brutal. I'm going to go with brutal on that one. Leo Blair appeared in the 2013 version of The Magic Flute, playing the superstar role of a spirit. That's the spirit, guys, as we move on to Q10. Which of the following is not one of the queens? great grandchildren, Savannah, Sophia, Lena. Of course, her grandchild just got married the other day. Eugenie or Eugenie. They're not the type of royal names that you'd find in a textbook, but which one has Lizzie never written on a birthday card? 2017's favorite girl's name, Sophia, is the name of the game. Here's 775 of you knew that. The queen has seven great-grandchildren, unless another one popped out during the show, which could have happened. Q11, the penultimate round. Which of these names is mentioned in the Doomsday Book? Morris, Lancelot, Lamar. You are going to be doomed if you get this wrong. I'm not going to mince my words here. Because there's a lot of cash on the line. It lists the people who had to pay tax in the 11th century. But only one of these names made an appearance better at R&B than doom and gloom. Lamar was the name right here. Hey, oh, another savage. Triple the savage. Triple the sausage in tonight's game. That was another rough one. 700 down, 87 if you made it through. Tax havens at the ready because we are jet setting into the final round. 87 players left in the game, another 100 using their extra lives to get back in. That's 187 of you up for the 5,000 pounds. And here we go with Q12. Which of these was not one of the original Boy Scout merit badges introduced in 1980? 11, taxidermy, archaeology, bugling. All skills that I have down. 
victory skills vital for everyday life, but which one only got a badge in 1997? You can't make a war movie without it, but was Bugling really deemed badge worthy? Better at uncovering the past than stuffing it up. Archaeology is the answer we were looking for here. We've got 92 winners, my lovely jubblies. <laughs> Well done to our 92 winners tonight. Almost 100,000 we started with, down to 92. You survived the triple sausage and a whole bunch of brutals, and you are taking on 54 pounds and 35p. Well deserved to Quizzy Calburn, uh, to Michael M238 as well, Nicole Morgan, Ivan Diven. Well done to you and the others as well. What are you going to do with that cash? Get yourself some lollipops, a new decanter, enter a decathlon if you feel like it. If you've got the energy, there's a lot you can do with that 54 pounds and 35p. What an exciting game. What a way to end the weekend, HQTs. You smashed it, as always. I'm Sharon Carpenter. Come find me on the socials. Share your thoughts on tonight's game. That was an epic one. Let me know how you did. I can't wait to find out. We'll be back tomorrow at 9 p.m. with another 12 rounds of epic trivia for you and another stash of 1,000 quid on Movie Monday. Until then, have a fantastic night, everyone. See you soon and well done again.